sewing machines can seem really intimidating, but in this lesson, we'll help you understand the basic functions and features of a domestic sewing machine, and we'll help you set up a pressing station. Why do you need a pressing station? Keep watching to find out. Much like a car, sewing machines vary from brand to brand and model to model. But also like a car, they all have some of the same basic features, even though these features might look slightly different from machine to machine. Here in the studio, we use Bernina, so I'm going to show you this on our machine here. In this lesson, we're like your guide, not your instruction manual. We can't show you every machine, but we can help you get oriented. The golden rule with your sewing machine is to refer to your manual. This is going to help you identify each of the following features on your machine. We recommend that you spend a day with your machine, going through the manual and getting familiar. You can even label the different parts on your machine with post-its while you're still getting used to everything. So all you have to do is get out some scraps of fabric and try things out until you feel comfortable. Once you are familiar with your machine, set a calendar reminder each month to go in, clean it out, get it oiled if you need to, and just make sure that everything is working well. This is really gonna pay off in the long run. First, let's talk about threading your machine. This is where some people begin and end their sewing adventure. But once you learn how to thread your machine, you can practically do it in your sleep. Again, you'll need to consult your manual to get the specifics, but you're essentially pulling your thread so it runs here from the spool along the thread guide and the take up lever that moves your uh, up and down as you're sewing all the way down into the needle. Threading is simple after a few times and YouTube is full of videos to help you thread if you just look up your specific machine. Next, let's talk about stitches. Most domestic sewing machines come with a variety of stitches. Some have dozens. How many do you really need? That depends on the types of projects that you want to sew. If you want options for heirloom and specialty stitches, that might be a priority for you with your machine. But for sewing garments, you really don't need that many different stitch types. The most commonly used stitches in garment construction include a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, and a buttonhole. For the bow top in this sew along, you just need a straight stitch. But we'll talk more about stitches later. Sewing machines usually come with the ability to change the width and the length of each stitch. There's a wide variety of reasons to change your stitch length and width, but when you are just starting to sew a woven garment, a straight stitch with a length of 2.5 is a good place to start. All sewing machines have a backstitch button or lever. This will allow you to stitch in reverse. Backstitching at the beginning and end of each row of stitches will secure them. If you don't backstitch, your seams might come undone while you're wearing your garment, and nobody wants that. Sewing machine tension controls the amount of tension put on the thread while it's running through your machine. If your tension's too tight, it'll result in tight gathered stitches. But if your tension's too loose, it will result in weak, loopy stitches. If you encounter tension issues, again, you're going to want to consult your machine's manual and test everything out on scrap fabric until it's balanced. Are you sensing a theme here? It's all about practicing and testing. This is the hand wheel which you can use to manually crank your machine. It's really handy if you need to work slowly or precisely. This is the presser foot. The presser foot holds the fabric down and against the feed dogs, which are the small teeth that pull the fabric through the sewing machine as you sew. You'll raise and lower the foot with a lever here. As you progress in your sewing adventure, you'll find that you need different feet for different jobs, like installing a zipper or sewing piping. Many machines come stocked with the basic feet that you'll need to get started, so don't stress. But the presser feet can also be purchased separately. Just make sure it's compatible with your machine before you purchase them. A bobbin is a small metal or plastic spool that's loaded with thread before you start your project, and it's inserted into the lower part of your sewing machine. There are two types of bobbin housing, a top-loading bobbin and a front-loading bobbin. Both have their advantages. A top-loading bobbin is slightly easier to set up. You can also see your bobbin through a, a small plastic door, making it easier to tell when you're running low on bobbin thread. Front-loading bobbins, like we have on our Brunina here, require a few extra steps when you're threading your machine but they do offer more control over bobbin tension. Some machines come with a speed control setting that allows you to slow down or speed up your sewing machine. It's really handy. Some machines also come with a thread cutter. They can be kind of hidden in weird places on your machine, so just make sure to look out for those. And those are the basic machine parts. Don't forget to read your manual to learn all about what your machine has to offer. But next, we're gonna talk about ironing, or as we like to call it in the sewing world, pressing. 
You have two important workstations in your sewing space. Whenever you make a project, you're going to spend almost the same amount of time sewing as you are pressing. Really quick, there is a difference between ironing and pressing. I'll show you. Ironing is a back and forth motion and totally cool to use on your finished clothes. It will stretch a piece of fabric though, so you don't want to iron your fabric before you cut it or iron your seams while you're sewing. You want to press. Pressing is an up and down motion. By pressing up and down, you don't risk stretching your fabric. Got it? You will use your iron almost as much as your machine. Pressing not only makes your fabric look good, it also aids in the construction of garments. Look for an iron with good adjustable steam and temperature. This will allow you to fine tune the amount of moisture and heat that you need for different kinds of fabrics. Some fabrics require a lot of steam, other fabrics don't need any steam at all. An ironing board is also essential for achieving a crisp professional finish on your garments. A standard full-size ironing board will allow you to press cuts of fabric as well as full garments. Most of them are adjustable so you can find the height that works best for you. A tailor's ham and a sleeve roll are totally optional but really handy tools. Since garments form 3D shapes, a ham and a roll can make pressing those curves even easier. When you're pressing your fabric, you want to protect it from heat damage and any water stains. So you're just going to want a press cloth. A press cloth is simply a piece of fabric that you place over your garment when you're pressing and it will take any risk of damage. Cotton muslin, cotton canvas, or even wool are all good options for a press cloth. Just have a piece handy whenever you're pressing. Here's a little tip. Having a spray bottle handy will allow you to add more steam power when you're pressing stubborn wrinkles or really thick seams. There are a bunch more tools you can add to your sewing space, but these are all that you'll need to get started for your pressing station. All right, so now that you know all about your sewing machine and you've set up a pressing station, it's time to gather some other handy notions. In the next lesson, we're gonna learn about creating a sewing toolkit.